again. Welcome back, and con- con- congratulations on this film, which, as you know, I I, I tweeted my I know you I, I, very I, I nice squealing tweets. with delight. I know you can I feel said. the squeal in your tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I really, really love this film. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I want to get to it. But first of all, you're missing a tooth and you have I, a black eye. I thought maybe I could get away with that on radio, but you're, you've are immediately you exposed. How? What, I know. I feel like a you? hockey player from the 70s. Imagine that, home, <laughs> home listeners. Yeah. What did, what happened? Yeah, but it, it just I'm slowly. I also my right arm's hanging on by a sin. I don't know why. I don't want to. I just I'm slowly losing my body parts. Okay, <laughs> they're just in, they're independent. They're independent incidents. of each they're other. Independent there wasn't incidences. An, I lost a tooth biting into a hamburger. It wasn't the words I, I, bar was, and fight no, involved. I, no, right. no bar fights. Right. No, no. Although if that helps romanticize my image, I'll, I I'll think be happy does. to go with yes. it. Yes, you've always written the scripts for the movies you've directed, not for this one. What appealed to you about directing this film? Yeah, well, actually, I've always wanted to direct something written by someone else, uh, direct a movie written by someone else, and uh, I, I never had the chance. And uh, it's fun. It's a different game because instead of changing it or telling how it's supposed to be, you think, oh, how, what, how does that work? Or how can I make that work? Or, you know, it's a different puzzle. It's kind of the reverse game. And this script was so solid and so such a, such a classic comedy script in a way. Uh, it's like an old Ealing's comedy or Preston Sturge's comedy. I just thought, yeah, that premise is so strong and it translates so well to Newfoundland and it's so much more relevant now that even even when the original Quebecois film was made because of economic situation yeah. out there and I just thought, yeah, this will work. Does it free you up if you're not the guy who's written the script? Do you feel a little less... Um uh, intense in a way because with actors you go I know it's not I know I don't know what what, what can we do with it uh, let me think you know like uh, it, I wouldn't have written that I, no, I don't yeah. know what were they thinking I don't know I know it sounds like <laughs> sounds moronic no one would talk that way uh, uh, it, in a way it, it does well it allows you to collaborate with the actors in a different way to be able to say well what, I don't know what can we do what can what's the idea there you know it's fun that way um, I mean uh, I still you know in the old auteur way try and find my own ownership in it mm-hmm. but uh, it was a fun experience our pal Taylor Kitsch who's been here before he, he, Taylor's he's a, fantastic he's yeah. in this film he's a revelation in this film mm-hmm. it's a different kind of thing for him he plays the cosmetic surgeon that the people in the, in this Newfoundland outport are trying to woo so I mean we know Taylor Kitsch for his breakout role on the acclaimed NBC TV show Friday Night Lights or big Hollywood films like Savages John Carter uh, more, more recently uh, the HBO TV movie A Normal Heart why was why was he the right choice for this role well, yeah, I mean, he's done a lot of action, uh, like uh, Lone Survivor recently and stuff like that, and that's the way people have been trying to position him in Hollywood, I guess. But I always thought he had this charm uh, that was underexploited. Uh, you could sort of see that in Friday Night Lights and in Bang Bang Club, this independent film he did in Canada. And I thought, oh, uh, yeah, he's got that... No one's using that old sort of movie star charisma that he has. And, uh, and he's likable. And uh, I thought there was danger in this role of making him too dumb. And sort of, if he's unlikable, then you, you'll you sort of lose affection. The good-looking dumb guy. Yeah. And uh, part of the trick of the film is that even though it seems like the town's seducing the doctor, he ends up seducing them. So we had to have someone charming and kind of likable. And, he, he, and he's the straight man, and he's amazingly good at that. That's a hard job, as you know. It's also uh, not that you yes, are a straight I do know man. That, yes. Not that you you are the you are the, <laughs> no, no, the no, funny I, guy. But. I'm definitely. <laughs> it, it, um, it's, it's it's an interesting role for him to take too at this juncture in his career. I mean, it, you know, we, he's got this traction and moment, moment, yeah. momentum in Hollywood for him to come up and do a, a Canadian independent film like this. Yeah, I don't know how conscious it was. I mean, I don't think it was a. Uh, Machiavellian career plan. I just think he thought it was a funny script, and he he liked the idea of, uh, and it was different for him for sure. And uh, you know, he hadn't really done a comedy, so I I think it was fresh for him. It, it's a, it's a film with a lot of heart um, because it gets at the emotional impact of economic devastation, such as we've seen on uh, in the Atlantic fisheries. Not not as a drama, but as a comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, do, do you think having an underlying social message like that fuels the comedy, or does it make it more of a challenge? Well, that sounds really. Um kind of um, sneaky of me to say, or, you know, exploitative of me to, to suggest that I'm, you know, oh, the pain, I can use that for, for laughs. But I do think, you know, when, when you have some reality at the heart of a comedy, it, it, 
it provides space. It does it is something to react against, you know. And you know, it's hard time out there in Newfoundland now, and they've had a hard time throughout much of their history. And for some reason, you know, they have an amazing. We all know, you know, as Canadians, that they have an amazing sense of humor out there. For, it's part of their natural endowment because of years of dealing with hardship. And uh, they're funny people. And you know, I've got a lot of them in the movie Mary Walsh and Kathy Jones and Mark Critch and things like that. And so, yeah, I think out of hardship, sometimes don't comedy arises as a necessity, I suppose. You do have a lot of them in the movie. I mean, aside from Taylor Kitsch and the great Brendan Gleeson, this this film is almost entirely cast with new Gordon Pinson, too. Gordon Pinson. Tell me about the importance of, of this casting decision. Well, I really wanted to make it a Newfoundland film. When I first read the script, um, it was kind of uh, vague in terms of its context and I thought no let's it has to be Newfoundland and it has to represent itself as Newfoundland and we have to cast it with Newfoundlanders first of all because it's so it's such a distinctive culture as you know and uh, you know you can't just pretend it's somewhere out east uh, if you do it you got to go for it and the accent's hard you know you, you have to work at it if, if you're bringing someone in so I said let's bring in Newfoundlanders let's root it in that culture it just seemed respectful too if we're dealing with the real hardship out there let's make it let's make it real and uh, and you know and it's beautiful out there it's Newfoundland let's embrace embrace it for what it is no no it's something of an interesting juxtaposition because you're, uh, you'd probably take umbrage at this because I know you're very well traveled. Yeah. But you're, you're in many ways the ultimate Toronto guy. I know people think of me as Mr. Urban. Well, you are. I guess I am. Well, yeah. yeah you're, you're the guy who dresses in black and hangs out in Kensington <laughs> well, Market, not today. aren't you? So, uh, look at it. I'm missing a tooth and I've got a. <laughs> you yes, know. It, right. Who in well, Toronto would, do, would walk around with a missing tooth? <laughs> So do, w- <laughs> did you on some level almost identify with the Taylor Kitsch character as being from away? Yeah, in the bo- middle of- both sides, for sure. And I'm not from Newfoundland, and I didn't pretend I am. But I, I do love it, and I do love the country. And people don't know it, but, I, you know, like I spend, you know, most of my summers up, up north, and I, I like the country. I respond to it. And I, I've always responded to, to that Newfoundland culture and wanted to shoot out there. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that that's a contradiction. It's weird that I'm... I feel in the response to this film, I'm feeling that there's this almost defensiveness about urbanites feeling, oh, you know, like if you know, that's that's country culture, you know, uh, you know, if supporting that is reactionary somehow, and I feel that this is some response to, I don't know, the division of what polarization. I don't know what you mean. Well, I'm it's, going it's... off on a tangent now. I don't know <laughs> what urbanites have said this to you. That they can't no, support I mean the it's film. just that you know, you know. I don't think it's a contradiction. I, I find it hard not I'm just to just pointing out it. the fact that for you, it's an interesting film for you to yeah surrounded. No, by I'm not. The... I'm not fighting you. <laughs> <laughs> with your black eye, your tooth. No, but I mean, I've always is... loved it and kind of loved, uh, you know, instinctively the nature and uh, sort of and, and sort of rural life. So I, 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 and you know, so I, I admit I play both sides. I you, see both sides. Of you've that. also said it's an old-fashioned style comedy told in a modern way. Yeah. What, what does that mean? Well, I mean, I just think it has this kind of classic structure it's very the jokes are set up and they're paid off and it's very satisfying in a way uh to see a movie like that i think comedies don't go in that direction so much anymore in hollywood they're they're more idiosyncratic kind of weird personality comedies that we don't do social comedies so much anymore we don't see them and so that was actually an exciting thing to me i don't think think it feels old-fashioned uh but i think it, it you know it has a kind of classic satisfying structure uh, that I, I, I kind of long for in movies now. Can I, I mean, I'm probably playing into stereotypes that I should know better of when I say something like this. There's the disclaimer, mm-hmm. but it, it's also a really big tent accessible film. Right. And I feel like we have a tradition in Canadian film to, at times of, of not making those kinds of films. Yes. Like, or... Or that they're not as valued yeah. somehow. It's like, oh, well, you made a big, there, big, you made a big pop song film. You know? There is a bit of a, a prejudice against that. I admit, you know, people say to me, well, you know, yeah, yeah, that's not really your film. You know, you're doing this big commercial film. And, and I say, that's not the way I, I feel about it. I mean, it's my film. I, I embrace it. And yeah, it, it, it's... I didn't go out of my way. It's not forced to be a commercial film, but it happens to play really well on audiences like that. And that's something that, I, of course, I, I, I was thrilled about, thrilled to do. It's not like I said, oh, this is going to ruin my auteur reputation in Toronto. 
No, it's that you're cashing in, clearly, <laughs> selling out. This is well, it's not a selling out, you know. I know. Uh, I I'm mean, being sarcastic. Yeah, I mean, the idea of selling out in this country is it's it's a fantasy. We don't even know how to do that. <laughs> I wish I, I wish true. I knew. It, it's it's funny talking about regional authenticity too. When this film is actually a remake yeah. of the French Canadian film La Grande Succession, we, we don't often see English Canadian remakes of successful Quebec films. I don't think it's. I think this is the first. Is it? I, I think so. That's how not often we see them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that something you think should change? I mean, it, there is this incredible legacy of successful Quebec film. Yeah. Well, no. Why don't we do this more? Uh, well, no, sure. It should be like Cirque du Soleil. We should be remaking. Uh, it should be everywhere. No, I mean, you know, every a successful French film, for instance, in France, the Americans immediately buy up the rights and remake it as a crappy comedy. Uh, or, you know, like, I mean, there's some successful ones there too, but no one has ever done that with Quebecois films. And some of them are, have really strong comic premises. And, uh, and yeah, I think it's sort of thrilling. Of course, that should be mined as part of our culture, and it's sort of there for the taking. This and you know, some of those ideas don't translate, but some do. And this film, uh, it is the self-appointed mayor, played excellently by mm -hmm. Brendan Gleeson, that that really personifies the connection we have between work and our self-worth. Yeah. What 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 it's about for you, Don? At this point, <laughs> I, I mean, as prolific prolific as you've been over the, the years, how how much pressure do you still put on yourself with each new project? Do you feel like you're still out to prove something? It's funny. I was just in, in I, I this film premiered the opened the Washington Film Festival, and someone stood up at the end and said, "Well, it's just so nice to see a film that uh, says something positive about work." And I just say, "Wow, my parents when I was a teenager could." would never believe that I would make such a film, such a statement. But it's true. I mean, work is, uh, you know, I, uh, it, it's impossible to deny that, 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 that our sense of identity and well-being comes from work. And, of course, I'm lucky to have a very good job. And, uh, you know, it's something I, I just sort of fluked into. But, uh, I, yeah, you know, I, it's impossible for me to imagine myself happy or satisfied without, without work. Uh, and, you know, I don't think I'm a workaholic by any means, but I, I have to return to it. How hungry are you? I'm not, you know, I feel like if I fault myself, you know, when I'm, when I, when I'm full of self-loathing, I, I wish that I was more ambitious. I feel like I, I don't sort of go for the jugular enough in that way. But on the other hand, you know, I think that my sort of discursive pat mind uh, sort of is, has done me well. You know, I ended up, as you know, like writing a Broadway musical, and I never, if I was focused in my career, I never would have done that. You know, I would have never would have allowed space for that. I've always gone off on tangents, and it sort of works. And I think that that's uh, that's actually a value of the Canadian situation in a way. It's a really, uh, it's a really enjoyable film, I, and I, I have a sense it'll do good business. Oh, thank you. I, I mean, hope. It, I, you know, I, I'm very happy that you like it because you know you're so so suave and urban. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, no, I do appreciate it. And listen, I, I if would... anything, sadly, I'm suburban. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Thornhill is where I grew up, pal. Uh, thank you for this. Thank you. Uh, director, writer, actor Don McKellar, it's good to see you again. His latest film, The Grand Seduction, stars Brandon Gleeson, Taylor Kitsch, Gordon Pinson, Leanne Balaban as well. We yeah. didn't mention her. She's, She's fantastic. In the it's out in theaters across Canada this Friday. Don McKellar has been with me here live in Studio Q.